it's that time of the year again, it's exam season, stay tuned. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Razor Ritsari, I'm the Director of Undergraduate Education here at the School of Dentistry, University of Manchester and thanks a lot for joining me on this episode of Manchester Molars. Now I'm going to start this episode by a huge congratulations to our graduating class of 2021. Our BDRS year 5 students were probably the best performing cohort we ever had with 31 of them which is about 41% of them graduating with BDS honors. Now BDS honors is actually quite a big deal it means that they have to not only get honors or distinction in the exams in their final year but also they have to get honors or distinction in three out of the remaining four of their more junior years. Having said that though because of COVID BDS year four was not counted but still this is huge achievement. So very well done guys amazing work. Now, as far as I know, two cohorts of our students at the moment are absolutely panicking. One of them are BDS year two because of some uncertainty about the end of the term date. And second are BDS year four students because of their medicine surgery short answer paper. Now, before I cover these two, let's join Sarah Member, our MDSS president, to tell you about the dental ball. Hello, so just for anyone who hasn't yet got their dental ball ticket, uh, just a final reminder that the ball will be taking place, fingers crossed, on Saturday the 17th of July. Um, it will be the biggest and kind of the only event of the year, so it's definitely one that you don't want to miss. We promise you a really fun evening full of great food, company and entertainment. Um, tickets are still available through the Google link, which you can find a link to at the bottom of this video. But we really hope to see you all there. Um, it will be a really great opportunity for staff and students to both come together and hopefully celebrate the end of what's been a really hard year. It will be taking place at the Edwardian Hotel, so we've made sure to go up above and beyond to get a really nice venue and just treat ourselves to a little bit of luxury. So BDS year 2 this year is indeed a clinical year meaning that we expect you guys to be here until the end of the week commencing 19th of July. However we have listened to you and we understand that some of you are not able to stay with us until the official end of the term and we're trying our best to be as flexible as possible to you. So as I'm recording this video my colleagues in the background are putting a communication together and you will know all the details very very shortly. Now with the BDS year 5 finishing we are obviously changing the timetable to allow our BDS year 4 students who are our new senior students to come on the clinic more frequently. We also have opened up Saturday morning AGP sessions for our students to be able to gain more clinical experience. As you can imagine there are lots of timetabling going in the background and I just want to thank everybody for being so flexible and accommodating while the whole timetabling is taking shape again. And last but certainly not the least is the medicine surgery short answer paper. Now before I touch on that please come and join me on an interview with Professor Barry to tell you all about how the British Society of Pediatric Dentistry presentation evening went last night. Last night we had our first virtual BSPD Northwest undergraduate poster presentation prize and it was an absolutely amazing night. We had eight oral presentations we had students between years four and year five and they were all really fantastic. There was an amazing spread of cases and the level of, and depth of their knowledge was inspiring. We had seven poster presentations, again between years four and five, and we had five prize winners in total. So our oral presentation, we had prizes number one, two and three, and we also had some cash prizes for the poster presentation. Our judges commented on the amazingly high level of knowledge and the lovely PowerPoints and presentation style of our students. So we should all be extremely proud of them. And we were joined at the end of the night, I'm pleased to say by Yasmin, who's the president of the Undergraduate Pediatric Dental Student Society. And she gave a lovely overview of the society, what it does and what it's planning to do in the future, rolling out to going out to schools. So that is uh, a lovely overview of the collaboration between that society and BSPD. Now when it comes to exams it's best to see what happens behind the scenes so please come and join me on my laptop so I can show you how we process exams. 
since BDS year five done their exams, I can go through some of their uh, raw data and show them to you. And if you're in BDS year four, you can be reassured that we do exactly the same for you guys, as well as all the other years, of course. So let me share a screen. And what you can see now is the raw data for the short answer paper for year five, which consists of 20 questions. And then you've got the normalized scores, which I'll come back to in a second. And then finally, the overall grade, which is in pink here. Now, so when you sit a short answer paper, there, each question has got a total amount of marks allocated to them. For example, question one was 18 marks, question two was 11 marks, and so on. But what is most important to understand is we have to determine what is the minimum standard we expect for a student to be deemed safe. So for that reason, we go through a process called a standard setting, whereby we look at each question in a panel and then we decide how many marks are the bare minimum we expect per question for a student to be then considered safe or allowed to pass. So for example, here you can see that in question one, we were expecting 11 marks to be achieved out of the total of 18 for somebody to be deemed safe. And then it's eight marks for question two, eight marks for question three, and so on. So what happens here now is when we go back to the raw data and a, a student has achieved a, a score of 12 in the raw score, which is one mark above the intended 11 pass mark, then obviously they are deemed pass. So what happens is then in my normalized column, you can see that that candidate has achieved 57.14%. So what we do is we normalize every single question to understand based on the set pass mark out of the total score, what value that's going to equate to. And these values are all then averaged together in order to create the overall mark for that question. So this is how the standard setting and how the normalization process works. So this was the general paper for the BDS year 5 and they also had the medicine surgery paper which very similar to the BDS year 4 they had the five questions but it's exactly the same so we had to standard set each single question and then normalize it and then average it to produce your overall mark. So once we've done this, however, we have to double check that our methodology and our exam process is also educationally sound. To do that, we normally proceed with what is known as the exam psychometrics. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the exam psychometrics for the general paper of the year five. Uh, so you get an idea of what we do behind the scenes. Um, so this graph is just roughly showing you the, uh, the performance of the cohort, which uh, is fairly standard to look at, but this is where the fun starts. Now, one of the tests that we always run is known as the reliability of the test. And essentially that means if we have to run this test again with a similar cohort of students, what's the likelihood of this test resulting in the exact same result? And this is done by a formula which is known as a Cronbach Alpha. And essentially, anything more than 0 0.6 is actually quite a high number for short answer paper. And, and as you can see, we are sitting at nearly 0.85, which is very good. And then what we do is we do a item deletion exercise whereby we remove question one from the equation and we observe what happens to the reliability uh, overall. And you can see if we remove question one, the Cronbach alpha will drop to 825 compared to the original 846, which means this question is positively helping toward the overall reliability of the paper. And we do that for all the 20 questions as you can see. The other test we run is also to look at the correlation matrix, whereby we look at the correlation of each single item in our paper to the overall result of the paper. And essentially what we're looking at is a good correlation to make sure that every question is positively contributing toward the overall mark. And we start to worry if by any chance we get a negative correlation to the total, and then we start to look into 
specific question and decide what we want to do with that question. Sometimes the question could be wrong, sometimes it's too hard, sometimes it's never been thought. So we decide to then remove that from the paper or do a relevant adjustment. As, and as you can see over here, everything is pretty much in good colors and nothing is too low down, which is good. And finally, we look at every single question based on the standard setting, which we said. You remember question one, which had a total of 18 marks. This is the distribution of the raw data and the red line on 11 is showing the pass mark. So we can see overall the majority of the students managed to pass this question quite well. And obviously, naturally, we always get a few students who are not successful in each question. And we do that for every single question to make sure we are not setting our standard too high or unrealistically and if by any chance this line is not where it is now and is going more toward the middle or going to get into the positive side of the normal curve then we start to look into that question with more depth to realize what we can do in order to address the problem we are seeing. So as you can see, there is a lot which goes in the background for every exam you sit. And what you need to know that we are over here to make sure our exams are really, really, really fair to you and you're not disadvantaged at all. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. This is the end of this episode of Manchester Muller. Until next time, we've been Reza Ruzzer, you've been amazing. Bye-bye.